And good evening. Today is May the 6th. Right now it is 7.34 and I'm calling to order this evening's meeting of the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission. For the benefit of those who have not participated in the Planning and Zoning Commissioning, our procedures are as follows. The secretary will read the legal notice of the meeting as published in the local newspapers. The applicant will be invited to come forward and present the case, explain to the commission and now this present what is being requested of the property. Comments of town agencies will be read for each application if there are any. First, there will be clarifying questions from the commissioners, then there will be an opportunity for clarifying questions from the audience. Next, we'll ask those who want to support the application to come forward, and second, we'll ask those opposing the application to come forward. As this is a public meeting must be recorded, it will be necessary for speakers to identify themselves by stating their name and address before addressing the commission. The applicant will then be free to leave or remain for the balance of the public hearing and the regular meeting during which the commission will try to reach a decision for each application. Each applicant will be notified in writing as to the decision of the commission has a right to appeal to the Superior Court if desired. Decisions of this meeting are available the day after the meeting by calling the Planning and Zoning Office at 203-453-8039 by after 9 a.m. Seated tonight is are the following, uh, uh, I'll introduce the members and then we'll seat them, of the Gilbert Planning and Zoning Commission. We have Frank D'Andrew, Walter Corbier, Richard Wallace, I'm Rich Meyer. We have Josh Hersman, Ray Bauer, Richard, Richard, I forgot your last name, I'm sorry, Richard, Richard Hudson, um, George Underhill, Reggie Reed. George is over there hiding outside by the window. But George Crowell is over there taking my word for it. And we have Lisa Brewer taking the notes. Shannon Gale is doing the recording. Richard, you got something to say? Legal notice from the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission. Notif notice is hereby given that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on May 6, 2015 at 7.30 p.m. at the Nathaniel B. Green Community Center, 32 Church Street, Guilford, Connecticut, Monuncatuck Room, second floor for the following purpose. Says, one, Mark Minuet, 748 Plains Road, Map 86, Lot 28, Zone R5, construction with a, of a garage with storage and office space above, Section 273-38A. Two, Mara Weissman, 117 Andrews Road, Map 12, Lot 76B, Zone R5, new five-bedroom house with patios and pool, Section 273-91. Sally and Michael Ziskin, 579 Lake Drive, Map 63, Lot 41, Zone R8, for 800 square foot accessory apartment, Section 273. Number four, amend 273 206, the Guilford Zoning Code, to replace the approved SCW signage regulation diagram. Copies of these applications are available for inspection at the Office of the Planning and Zoning Commission, Town Hall, South 50 Boston Street, Guilford, Connecticut. At this hearing, people, persons may attend and be heard, and written communication will be received. Dated this sixth day of May, 2015, Richard Meyer, Chairman. Thank you, that's wonderful. Uh, I'd like to see the members. We have all of our regular members seated, which is Frank Walter, Richard Mee. Josh, Ray, and we need one more. So, let's have George Underhill attend in this meeting, but please participate in all the discussions, okay? I appreciate that. All right, um, let's have, you are gonna vote. You've got the power tonight. Uh, all right, um, I'd like to uh, have a motion to open the public hearing. So, check. <laughs> All right, so um, first one up is going to be Mark Minuet, 745 North Plains Road, Map 86, Lot 28, Zone 05. Special permit for the detached garage with storage space and office above request to waive professionally prepared site plan. Do we have anyone? Come on down. <laughs> so, what do you got? I have a. Uh do you, do you know I have plans? I'm not sure if I have to pull out my plans to show what I'm, I'm proposing. A accessory building for a garage, three car garage with storage above, close for an office, my office in town. We have plans if you'd like to uh, okay. share. I have them here. I'll just show them. It's all in compliance with the height restrictions. Setbacks, we have plenty of room for setbacks. There's a house in front, 
uh, it, we just had it reassessed. It wasn't uh, assessed when we purchased the property, but it's assessed at 2.6 acres now. It was set for but now it's 2.6. Uh, the setback should be way within. It's I have a map showing where the where this parcel would be located, on top of the hill, not on the road. Be probably 100 foot setback, uh, 50 foot, 40 to 50 foot setback on the left hand side, and the proposed. There's a proposed bathroom in there for it, and it's going to be septic for storage. We went over with the test bits, and the proposed system is going to be down on the lower half by the road, which is all approved, non designed system. Um, so we do that system. Um, we went over the height restriction, which went over with something else. We were taking the cupola out because they're not too high. Yes, too bad. I like it. It's a good one. <laughs> but what do I know? It looks great. I, I don't know. So, you know it says to wave the professional. For, oh, the site plan. Yeah. That looks pretty professional um, for the drones. So that looks good. Um, anything we should know? About this? Um, this is an application for a structure that's over 750 square feet. That's why it's a special permit. Okay. And it, yes, that's right. And it's also an office and a detached accessory structure. Okay, so there's a couple of things going for it. So what else should we know? We have a memo from the director of health, I believe. Dennis? In your packet. What did Dennis have to say? Uh, the Bill for Planning and Zoning Commission from Dennis Johnson, Director of Health, dated May 3rd, 2016. The applicant's proposed garage and office will contain bathroom facilities and require installation of a septic system. Soil testing on the site revealed a suitable area for installation of a new septic for the garage. Based upon the soil test results, it's recommended that the applicant's proposed use be approved. That's great. Dennis has always got those nice letters. Good for All right, so you guys have any other questions for this gentleman? Or? That's pretty straightforward to me. What kind of an office are you planning to have? For I have an electrical business and Medivan Electric in Brighton Town. So you don't have people coming and going? No. What I do, I, I, I mostly, well that's, and that's what happened. I'm moving it there because nowadays with the contract and they deliver on site. So I don't have any deliveries to my office now. I really don't need my office. It really, it's just there more from the eight, basically nine to five. I have meetings, over plans. Basically, there's no delivery that night. So this is more day work. And I don't have employees. My wife is my, she does my book works. I'm basically buying, and I have four, four other employees, but they're on site. All the vans go home with the guys, so the vans won't be on site. The vans won't be there. So there's, not, there's no people going and coming and going either. How many parking spots do you have there for that? Excuse me? How many parking spots do you have there? I have three. So just three? Yeah, three, three in the it's front. Including those that go in the garage? Yes. Well, no, the three in front plus the garage. Okay. So six total. Just a legality, is it 745 or 748? 748. Good, good pickup. Thank you. So, um, any other questions we have? Yes, ma'am. Um, where is the driveway being situated to that? Do you know the house that's there, the existing house? Yeah. It's going to go to the left of the house. We just took, we took down the, it was like a little greenhouse there. Right. It's right, the telephone pole to the house is the property line. It's going to go right up on the left of the house, right up that little culvert, up to the, to the garage. So facing the house, I'm supposed to find that. Just to the left. On the left side. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Oh. <laughs> Um, I live next door to this property, and I don't know where, I mean, is it zoned for, <coughs> for this structure? Would it be the commercial property, or? Um, is by special permit, you can have a home office and a detached accessory structure. The caveat is that the owner of the property has to live either in the detached structure or the house. And in this case, they will be living in the house and so therefore they can have a home office. If they wanted to have the home office in their house, they could do that without a special permit. And this is not a variance then, or do you get this a variance for an extra? This is not a variance. No. This so is you not. can't put two property, two structures on that property based on acreage? Yes, it doesn't exceed lot coverage. She has 20% lot coverage on that property. And as far as the driveway, putting that driveway in, 
and that's pretty close to my property line. Is there any um, protection for us? It's our the way ours is set up. I mean, we're up on a hill with a 12 percent grade. What if our whole you know our driver just slides into the street? <laughs> Do we have any <laughs> protection for like blasting? Structure for what's there for we did the test pitting and the, the base of that whole mound is all ledge it's all rock so nothing to be washing off your house is going to be washing down we're going to be cutting we're basically i don't think they're going to be cutting into the ledge we're going to be grinding into the ledge to make the driveway go up through we're not going to be blasting for the driveway for as proposed so we're not going to be disturbing any so property. If, yeah, if there is blasting, we have protection as far as we can. Yes, the blaster will notify you. They'll put, we'll, they'll put sensors on your home to see it, and they're fully insured to see if there is a problem. They'll check for, for cracks before mm -hmm. and after, and they're liable for that. And so no... <laughs> okay, so you are saying you'll, you'll videotape for our homes? The yes, the blasting company. We did with the, with, before we knew that. Yep. <laughs> they blasted and we had damage and we did wind up. No, I, 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 got, I have three quotes from blasting companies and each one of them I made certain that they would go into the, each home, the perimeter homes, that they would notify them, go in. They, they look at the, 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 they'll take pictures of the basement, see if they have cracks, and then they go in, they'll they put a, 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 a sen sensor, some kind of sensor matic or something on for how much volume is, is blasted. They put it at your home while they're doing that, and then they go afterwards to see if there's any other cracks in it. Uh, we have two 200 year old homes there, that's why I'm asking. That right. Did it have no, that was my concern too, because I've, I've, I've had it where I was built in the building before, and people came in and they didn't notify us at all. So they, I, I, they did, we, did, we denied it, we should have accepted it. Right. So we no. learned our lesson. My other question is for the um, septic that's going down below. You're certain that it's far enough away from our well because our well is in that lower portion close yes. to the road. Yes. Okay. It's in that culvert. We went over that one with George. I have room if we have to move it to the left or to the right. Because I have to be from, from yours. You're looking at the home to the left of you. I never said the seashore or shore. I can be from them, but their well is pretty far, so I can move it the other way away from yours. Okay. Can we we don't even know where yours is. Yeah. It's not where it looks like that antique. We don't know where your well is. Our well is in that front. We don't know. It's, it's not even on a print where it is. Right. We're, we're assuming it's in that location. Okay. So I'm, I'm thinking, worst case, it's the closest spot. So I'm going to stay from that closest spot. I'm going to stay far as away as I can. 75 feet from that point. Out. Okay. Because there is there's there's no indication where it is. There's no plan or nothing. For well, the record, may we please have the names of the neighbors who spoke, um, the first lady who spoke, uh, and, uh, and your address? Uh, Stacy Miller, seven twenty. That way. Okay, Stacy Miller, seven twenty. Okay. And and the second lady that spoke, Sarah Session, seven five five. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Suzanne, we're about twenty four. Very short. Thank you. Good. Anyone else? Yeah, sir. Sorry, I'm late to the party here. That's okay. Join in. Okay. Um, okay. So when we spoke earlier on, on the property. Sir, may we have your? Um, Timothy Miller, seven twenty nine. Um, the how the um, when we looked at the property, you mentioned that the house was going as far to the property that way, away from our house, and it looks like it's. Like closest closest part to our house. <laughs> so this is the total opposite of what you told me. This, the house this is a garage. This is the, this is the three-car garage. Right. Where is what, it? What, there's two structures right next to each other. Looking at this here. Is it, we see we didn't get the second one that you guys sent everybody. We didn't no, the, the the one in the front is the is the driveway. Okay, yeah, this is the driveway right here. That's okay. where the driveway. And then the what's driveway that? Goes, that's the parking area in front of the structure. Yeah. That's, okay. the park, that's the driveway going up with the parking areas in front of that structure going up. And, and that's 40 feet from our property line. It's minimal. It's a, the, the set. The set. Can you show them on your map? Would you like to come up and see the drawing up close? Sure. You're really welcome to. Existing house in the driveway with 
come up this way. Okay, come so you're where this my property line here. Is right at the cell phone pole. 30. Well, the, um, the, the stone wall. Pole. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Cell phone pole, 30 mark. Yeah. You see it. Wall over survey. Comes up and then just mark it as this is being the parking area. Then I mark the structure of this. All right, so why does the structure need to go up before the house? Well, we, we don't know if we're going to. We do this house to determine what we're going to do here. So can you have three structures on that property then? As long no. as you doesn't exceed lot of coverage. Lot of coverage. You can only have one house. And what do you do with the house that's not ranch? Is that going to be a ranch no, property? No, it's not down. If we do that one, if we do that, then I'll get So how do you get how do you get to here without the driveway? Because you'd have to see yeah. this house. No, I can go right I can go around the side. Great. Of it, 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 we would fit right through here. I already took that. This, this shed is down. That's behavior it is, right? It's going to go straight up the driveway? No, it would go through here. And say the culvert going through 30. The ledge comes in through here. Right? So it would go through here. And then, then it gradually goes So basically, there's already like a kind of an indentation. Exactly. It's made there. It's, exactly. left, it's going to go that way. That way. Okay. Right. And once it goes up, it's going to shed the levels off. And so I have another plan up here which shows the grades. It goes up to 70 percent grade, to 70. This is going to be your regular, this is going to be your regular driveway, your regular garage for your car. And you're going to have, you, are you going to have another garage somewhere else? On, on if the, I do the house here, I'll have a two-car garage there. Yes, this will just be a garage with my office. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so it's an office. It's not, it's not a garage for their house. It's a separate mm -hmm. kind of office for their business. With no vans coming in or out, or like I said, it's. Yeah. Okay. okay. And, and just as a, as a side note, we encourage everyone to come and always ask questions. This is why we're here. Mr. Chairman, um, sir, yeah, I. This. Considering the interest and the the complexity in terms of the ledge and uh, other items, I think that it would behoove us to request a professionally prepared site plan um, and to table the public hearing to our next May meeting. Um. Steph, is this a complex that we need a site plan? Well, you have neighbors that are concerned. I mean, if you see our, our, the way our driveway is pitched, it goes like this, and it's basically a drop cliff. And it's not, I don't think, I don't know what's underneath there, but I foresee that whole, they start blasting my whole driveway. Okay. It's, it's already eroding. One, one question, the, <coughs> the site plan, I mean, if he was just putting a driveway in, he wouldn't need to come here. So no. the only reason we need the site plan is to make a determination as to should we grant the construction of the of, right. It mm -hmm. has nothing to do with the driveway. I mean, he could put the driveway in however he wants. That's correct. And he would not even have to be here. So I'm not sure if Mr. Corbier's concern is the driveway, why we would need a professionally prepared site plan for that piece. Now, if it's something else, then... Well, I wasn't talking about just the driveway, right? Okay. What I mean, the house is well within the variance. Is that where the well, it's up to the commission. You have a right. request for yeah, a waiver. Just trying to understand why, what, what's driving the need for that. Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, the driveway certainly can be put in without any kind of a permit. I mean, it seems like the neighbor's concern is that driveway more than right. the structure. This is, I guess, the point I'm trying to make. Well, um, I mean, I like the purchase with the wealth of portion of caution. Um, and it sounds like we're real close to the edge of where we need a site plan. Um, just got so too many variables, and we don't. We, uh, did you make that in the form of a motion? Um, I'd be happy to do that. Move to table to. Um, what are the concerns with the, with the, with May, 20, with the drive? May 20th? May 20th. And I think what we're asking is a site plan and identify all the structures and give a sense of comfort to the neighbors um, that they are here and they express some concern. And we like to make the sure that is the eroding of, of their, their driveway coming off, which is, it's rock. I mean, there's, there's, it's, it's ledge and what we're going through, where I'm proposed to put the driveway is almost the culvert there now where there's a driveway. The only top will be scraped off, and I don't even think I'm going to blast that wall. I'm, I'm hoping 
Trust me, I don't want to. The glass off the top the of the fact that you're, you're hoping, it's not definite. So when we, we hear you say you're definitely not going to blast. But if it's rock, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a ledge of rock going off. It's not where you're blasting into a, a, a dirt wall that's going to load off your property. And, and trust me, I would never do it. I'm not going to do anything to you that's going to hurt anybody. I, I, I know you don't know me. But it's, I, I, I look in all interests of everybody. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not just go do anything. I'm not a builder and go do something that's, and forget about the name. You know, I, I know it's there and I know the full concept of what I do, and what can happen, and what needs to be done. I think we're just, we're just going from experience in the past. People I, said one or two blasts. I understand. And for you, for their house and the house next to it, it's been, Multiple but blasts. you get someone who gets a blaster in there that doesn't, yes. it's not insured, or they say they're insured, they're not, and they don't come over and introduce themselves and, and take pictures and put a sensor on, on your properties of how much blasting they're doing. And I, all three blasts that I told them, I said, they need a small, they can do a certain dosage of blasting. They can do small, they can do it twice and do it half the, half the, the, the time. It's it not just one big blast and get all the rock out of it. And I understand that. And it's not, that's not what I'm doing. You may need to put that way, but fine. Okay. Or, uh, I, I had a question. What, you know, we're talking about a professionally prepared site plan. Your site plan is, well, what you currently have on file is relatively professional compared to some of the site plans that we normally have. What more? The, 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 what he showed you was the building plan. Yeah. Not the, not not the site, the, not the site, site, not yeah, the site plan. Site we've plan seen, plan. for site plans, we've seen. Okay. Oh. Is there a hand-drawn site plan? Yes. Um, sir, yeah, would you mind moving to your left a little bit what? just so sure. they can see, or sure. to this direct, one direction will, here, so they can see. Will, would the professional site plan be able to completely determine? No. What, so no, it's going to give a it's going to it's going to uh, typo to topo. Yeah. It's not going to tell you exactly what's underground. It's going to show you the grade, which I have a, a plan here. I'll show you the grade of what the grades are. They're not going to show you 20 feet, 30 feet down if that's a ledge or not. That's undetermined. And so you go in there and start scraping with a with a an excavator. So that's why it wouldn't necessarily. It's really hard until yeah. you get something in there. It would be stamped and it would be clearer for the. Yeah, but it the public. But if he, but in the site plan, is going to look into what's below. Just not sure how it's going to inform the judgment here because, I mean, whatever it shows is not relevant to what was before it's decided. It's I'm going over over driveway now, not versus my, my, that's, my structure that's that's that, I, that I came for. So, I mean, and I understand their, their concern, and I'm not, I'm not opposing them. I'm, I'm, as, as I recall, too, blasting is a strict liability. So if there's damage to your property, it's up, almost up to the blaster to prove that he didn't cause it. So there is protection there, but I'm just not sure what the site plan is going to show. It's not going to tell us how much or are you or are you not going to have to blast. It's going to show you topo. It's going to show you the elevation. And that's what, and yeah, what it sounds like the neighbors are most concerned about. That's, that's why really the not was in our jurisdiction. When we yeah. uh, move to withdraw I, and no. So I just want to be clear, we're, we're trying to get in, he's trying to get in this freestanding commercial property with plumbing and everything, a three-car garage, in addition to his house. And then what are we doing with the house that's on the structure now? We're not taking that down, or eventually we're going to take it out, or if we don't get the garage in, we're going to keep that's that out before us. Can you have three structures on that property then? Right, as so long as long as coverage, as long as it meets the coverage requirements. 20% lot coverage. So, right, so he's got plenty of room to do it. It's yeah. currently 20%, correct? 20% is I have plenty of room to do it. Oh, yeah. now I'm not going to. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. I know. But I'm I'm saying, I think we're confusing. The garage and the we're, confu we're confusing structures and dwelling units. You're only allowed to have one dwelling unit on the lot. So you can't get a per permit for a new dwelling unit unless he also has a demolition permit to get rid of the existing one. So you can only have one dwelling unit. How many structures you can have? You know, you could have sheds and, and barns and chicken coops and various other kinds of buildings. There's only allowed to have one house on the lot. Okay. So the, the current lot coverage is... You mean the, requir the zoning requirement? No, the, 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 the current... The, the amount that he is actually currently covering. Without the garage. Without the garage. You don't have garage. to figure, but he's not, certainly not over on lot coverage. I can tell you that. It's a fairly large lot. Yeah. So 2.6 way. Yeah. 2.6 acres he can. Or nowhere close to 20%. How much of that is buildable? I mean, 
Okay. Right, well, the, the motion is on the table without a second. It, um, so Walter has a motion dies. on the table um, to um, table this until when? A uh, motion to continue the public hearing to May 20th. And request a professionally prepared site. And request a professionally prepared site plan. That's correct. So we have a motion. Does anyone care to second that? Motion fails. There you go. All right. Hearing continues. I said it dies. You'll have an answer tonight. More accurate. All right. So Thank you. Um, any other questions from the audience? Any other comments? Uh, last chance? No, no. We only asked for questions. We didn't ask for people in favor or opposed. Anyone in favor or opposed? Yes, ma'am. One more question. Are you planning to leave the house that is like currently on that Plains Road? No. You're planning to take it down? Yes. Before you... One structure there. If we build on top, we're going to take that down. Well, right now, we're not talking about the one on top. We're talking about the one in the middle. So... The one on the bottom. Talking about the one on the bottom, are you taking it down before you do the garage? No, we're going to build the garage first. Yes. 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 Yes.
to modification of the special permit. Uh, dwelling units in industrial zones, which this is, require special permit. Okay. Thank you. Good. Any questions from the audience or comments? Thank you. Can I get a motion to close public hearing? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, okay. Can I get a motion to open the Mayor Weston? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're up. See you little faith. Whip and rail. For the record, uh, Mark Young, I'm a land trader with all of the associates, uh, representing uh, Fish and Mara Weissman. Uh, this property is on uh, Andrews Road, um, on a plan, uh, which is at one and three quarters 20 feet. Uh, Andrews Road is here. Uh, the uh, Little Harbor uh, Beach is, is, is down here. Um, the original house, uh, which was built in the uh, early 80s, uh, was uh, unsuitable for the Weissmans, um, but they love the property. So uh, they have raised the original house and uh, designed a uh, new house. Um, the, uh, the new house will use, uh, will have a uh, new septic system designed uh, according to public health code. Uh, in this area, approximately the same area as the original system. Uh, anybody who knows this uh, area knows it's pretty rocky, but um, we've got some new castles over here, revealed some suitable soils, so uh, we're going to not be stacked out. There's an existing well over here, which uh, will be also be uh, used. Uh, this uh, the house is shown here in this uh, kind of maroon color. Uh, there's a, a three-car garage with a car court uh, covered uh, passageway to the, to the main house. There's an extensive patio uh, here and a lower patio here with a uh, lap pool. Uh, the uh, driveway basically follow the existing driveway. Uh, it will be uh, paved with a pea gravel surface. Um, and there's a uh, kind of a turnaround area here, and called a motor court uh, in here, uh, which will be uh, surfaced with uh, pea stone over a, uh, a deep uh, crushed stone base. Um, so these uh, areas will be uh, permeable to uh, stormwater. Uh, we have uh, provided a uh, rain guard for the stormwater uh, off of the, uh, of the house. Um, this is size for the first inch of runoff due to the increase uh, in uh, runoff from the, uh, through the house compared to the original. Uh, there was a comment from uh, John Goucher uh, suggesting that uh, we should treat the entire volume of runoff of the first inch of rainfall from the, uh, from the impervious surface. Uh, it would require approximately one-third increase in size of the uh, rain garden. And uh, we got those comments at uh, about 4 o'clock this afternoon, so we haven't had time to change the plans, but uh, that certainly is feasible and uh, will not be a problem to uh, accommodate that change. Um, there was also concern with a, uh, 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 a spillway over the edge of the uh, rain garden, and again, we can add that detail, um, but we just, we, we had half an hour today, we just didn't have time. Now, um, we, there is, uh, uh, when, when, when this lot was, was subdivided back in the early 80s, um, a view easement in favor of the adjoiner, uh, which is now uh, Kelly, was provided. There's a dotted line along here, which shows the limit of the uh, easement. That provided for uh, no structures um, in that area, which would uh, obstruct the view and it also gave uh, Kelly the right to cut any trees uh, in that area. And uh, as you can see, we have observed that easement. Uh, there will be a uh, small area here in the easement which will be uh, excavated, but um, that will be below the sight line and so uh, won't be visible to the uh, joiners. Uh, we have uh, prepared, have a landscape plan prepared by a uh, professional uh, landscaper, uh, which uh, provides with 
plant, several planted areas uh, with uh, you know cedar, some some native uh, native species, uh, which are uh, detailed on here. Uh, to some extent, the uh, landscaping will have to be uh, worked out on site due to the uh, you know, the fairly rough terrain, you know, rocks, boulders. Um, so uh, you know the. the uh, you know, the landscapers will uh, make some individual decisions based on what's, what's exactly where on the site. Um, there was another concern that Kevin brought out uh, with um, concerning the uh, uh, excess uh, uh, pool water. Um, the disposal of the pool water when the pool is drawn down in the fall, we provide a small depression area here to receive that water to avoid, so, so it's not just run down the hillside. Um, you know, it, there's a there's a note here on the on the detail sheet that uh, you know I don't think this area will will uh, accept the entire volume of, of of drawdown, but they can do a little at a time, and that will uh, give it a chance to to soak in and uh, prevent any uh, any uh, channel forming uh, down the hillside. The uh, Coastal resources, um, obviously uh, the shoreline here. We have uh, modified bus and escarpments along here. A small area of tidal wetland uh, in the intertidal zone. There's a rocky shorefront and a uh, small uh, beach area here. And of course shoreland uh, outside the uh, flood zone. Uh, we have uh, provided for extensive erosion control uh, measures. Um, there a silt fence and hay bales going all along the uh, downhill edge of the uh, construction area. And there is there will be an additional uh, silt fence um, right along the top of the uh, bluff to uh, to uh, take care of any uh, any possible uh, erosion due to the landscaping and, and uh, construction of the path over this way and uh, so on. So I think overall, I, we, we try to uh, keep the, uh, the house construction in the most suitable area. It's, uh, it's pretty much as far as we can get from the uh, coastal resource uh, without impinging on the uh, building line. We're, we're in fact not right on the building line, but we're a few feet down from that. And uh, we're the new house will be substantially in the same area as the existing house, which I show on here in the uh, in, in the dark line. Uh, the, there was some concern about the height. Um, we have calculated the uh, the height. Uh, I found a detail sheet. I did an extensive calculation to determine the average grade. I, I think right here. Yes, thank you for that. Uh, and in fact, uh, the, the the new house, the first floor is going to be four feet lower than the original house was. Now I don't have. We have some photos of the original house, um, but I do not have any measurements of the, of the roof height on the original house, but I believe we will be a bit lower than it was. And in fact, our, our heights are calculated uh, including the, the cupola, uh, which is proposed uh, to be constructed on the, on the roof. Uh, let's see, I think we have a... Uh, Elevation, which would show that. Uh, yeah. That's the elevation uh, from the uh, shore side. Okay. So there, there's a small cupola, and that meets the uh, height regulation. So you know, I, I think overall we try to be sensitive to the, uh, to the environment and, and, and to the neighborhood. Um, there are a number of uh, substantial new homes in the area, and I think uh, this will uh, fit in well. Um, I also noticed in the application when I was reading it that in deference to the neighbor, you set it 10 feet off the building setback line. Correct. Which would. Correct. We could have uh, put it, you know, back up the hill a little bit, but um, to keep it down, you know, a bit farther than, than you know, the, the deference to the neighbor, we thought it would be uh, appropriate. Well, it's 
Ms. Cameron? I have a question. Why don't you ask your question? Since you, we're, we're forming our thoughts, so you go ahead and ask your question. Your name, please. Suzanne Kelly. Um, I'm the neighbor above the license, and I um, first went to that first case. I wonder if there's going to be any question. No. No. We, we, we plan to do all the rock excavation will be with a hydraulic ram. We, we call a whole ram. So it's mounted on a uh, excavator. It's like a giant jackhammer. Um, which does a little at a time. You know, it's, uh, I'll, I'll grant you it's, it's noisy, but it, 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 it will not be doing any blasting. I can assure you of that. And then how long do you project? Uh, how long does the excavation extend? Build the entire project. Oh, the entire project? Two months. <laughs> Six to nine months? No, a little longer. 18 months. 40, 18 months. Okay. Uh, I, I'm not a construction uh, planner, so that's, that's out of my way. And then my final um, remark is that it slipped my mind, uh, or it has slipped my mind for the last two years, that the Kellys have beach rights. Mm -hmm. And I just wondered if the Weissmans were aware of that. We've never spoken about it. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they are. They are. Um, to, where the is and all. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm aware. Yeah, uh, there's a path that we can designate for you to get uh, to what we do. So if you ever want that path, tell us and create a path for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You have a memo yeah. from Dennis and also from yeah. Goucher, maybe. Yeah. So I'll start. So yeah. it's a good start. Um, this is a letter from John Goucher to Kevin um, <coughs> regarding 117 Andrews Road. Dated May 6th, it's today. Kevin, the proposed dwelling is not inconsistent with CCMA policies. However, we recommend that minor revisions be implemented specifically to the proposed rain gardens. The proposal includes a cistern to harvest and uh, reuse rainwaters and two rain gardens to retain and treat additional rainwater. The applicant should be given credit for incorporating these stormwater BMPs into their into the site. However, we believe that the rain gardens have uh, not been adequately sized to retain a su sufficient volume of storm water runoff for two reasons. First, the rain gardens appear to be sized to capture the storm water generated by runoff from the area represented by the increase in impervious surface, i.e. proposed area existing area. Not the entire impervious surfaces created by the newly constructed dwelling and related improvements. When a structure is demolished and replaced by a new structure, we believe that the volumes of, uh, of treatment and retention required should be calculated as if the entire structure is newly proposed. This approach provides uh, for the replacement of structures usually developed during a time when the goal of stormwater drainage was not to treat it, but to remove it quickly from the site to minimize flooding or wet areas. Two, the stormwater retention calculations include the anticipated vo void space in the underlying gravel and mulch as storage volume. We do not include media porosity uh, in calculating stormwater storage volume. The storage potential within the media voids typically diminishes over time, sometimes significantly due to compact sediment load, the accumulation of organic material and inconsistent or improper maintenance. Additional information should be added to the plans regarding the proposed storm rainwater gardens. Specifically, cross-section BB is shown on the site plan as spanning the proposed rain garden one, but is not included in it. The plan should be revised to include the cross-section of the rain garden. B, it is unclear what will happen if or when the storage volume in each rain garden is exceeded. The design detail shows an underdrain, but the site plans do not appear to account for any underdrains. Are the proposed rain gardens designed to act at a level, uh, as level sp uh, spirits, spreaders, if they are over top. This should be made clear on the plans. Accordingly, we, rec we recommend the proposed rain gardens be resized to retain the volume of the stormwater generated by runoff from all the proposed impervious cover, excluding the proposed rock walkway, and assuming a much smaller storage volume within the proposed medium. This will reduce the occurrence of bypass and thus down 
gradient slope erosion. Finally, we recommend that the down gradient edges of the proposed rain garden be designed as level spre uh, spreaders. spreaders. I don't know why this word is going <laughs> to more evenly distributed bypass flow, which will also maintain slope erosion. Please let me know if uh, you have any questions or if you need any additional information. John Goucher. Environmental Analyst 3. Right. Yeah. Before you read that, you're okay with all that, right? Yes, um, we, as I said before, we got yep. that letter at uh, 4 o'clock this afternoon, and uh, we have no problem with in implementing uh, those changes. Uh, you know, we designed this um, a part of farm that we worked with, uh, with Jim Portley a number of years ago. Uh, you know, attitudes have, and, uh, you know, have, have changed, um, so uh, we have no problem with complying with uh, the current uh, methodology. That's great. <laughs> All right, there's another letter here. I'll take a second crack at it. Uh, this is May 6, 2015 to Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission from Kevin McGee, Reed Coastal Area Management Review, Mayor Weissman, 117 Andrews Road. Um, the information provided indicates that the applicant is proposing a, to construct a five-bedroom house with a new septic system constructed on top of a bluff at an elevation above the FEMA flood zones. The construction of the stone wall walkway to Little Harbor is located adjacent to FEMA flood zone VE elevation 15. The stormwater management system consists of a permeable driveway, turnaround, and rain gardens designed to infiltrate water from the building, roof gutters, and driveway. In order to make sure the coastal resources are protected during the construction process and after construction, I recommend the following conditions of approval. One, the Town of Guilford Enforcement Officer should be notified to inspect the sedimentation and erosion control measures prior to any site work. Soil stockpiles should be contained by silt fencing and or hay bales. Soil erosion and sedimentation control measures shall be maintained until vegetation is established or suitable materials installed to the satisfaction of the zoning enforcement officer. Landscaping, landscape plan be revised to show additional native shrubs to be installed on the hillside between native cedars and, and the proposed planting above the cottage to provide a protective bluff to Little Harbor. Three, uh, three revised plans be submitted to zoning enforcement officer addressing the concerns of John Goucher, CTDEP, prior to the issuance of a building permit. So um, it says additional native shrubs. Um, that could be anything. Right. I think we, there is a note uh, on the landscape plan indicating that uh, the various plans Let's see, all areas that have uh, open ground and episodes will be planted with uh, strong resistance, uh, tree shrubs, and uh, ground cover to uh, create soil retention. Um, there's a uh, clear list, um, and as I said before, um, I, the, some of those uh, locations and, 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 and those sort of decisions will have to be made on site depending on the particular spot uh, that. Uh, so, so in your opinion, you're going to comply with Kevin's request? Yes, we have no problem with that. Uh, a number of, uh, several of his uh, comments are actually covered in the, uh, in the uh, construction sequence. Uh, but, um, I have no doubt. All right. Any other questions? George? You always got questions. How big a house is this going to be? How many square feet? Let's see. Uh, Stop the square footage. Uh, <laughs> It's a house, There's a little breezeway, there's a garage with a nice area that might have been above it. The whole thing is... What's the ground coverage in that area? Uh, I believe, uh, let's see, 20% uh, is allowed. We're at about 6.5%. Okay. And do uh, patios count as ground coverage? Pardon? If you have in here patios as a plural, <clears throat> I'm just wondering if they count as ground, ground coverage. Patios, no. No. And you're not. The swimming pool does. Pool does. The pool does, but the driveway does not. So far. Okay. So you said you're within 6%? No. Right, we're about 6.5% and 20% is allowed. Um, Likewise, the floor area, now we're at about 8.3% uh, 8, 8 where 40% is allowed. So we're, we're, we're well under the uh, permitted uh, numbers. It's, it's, the, the total lot is about 80,000 square feet, uh, less than two acres. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. 
I, I have a quick question about uh, it has a depression here built in above the hay bales mm -hmm. just for something simple that's going to happen a couple times a year right. about the drainage of this pool water. Right, right. In the fall, uh, uh, standard procedure is to uh, drain down the pool about six inches from the top. Yeah, uh, well, I, I know, I know that, and I know the the theory about gallons per square inch, and according to this plan, and it's going to the depression for draining of this pool. You're talking thousands and thousands and thousands of gallons of water. No, it's, not, it's not that much. I don't well, know. On, on a 1632 to drain four inches of water, you're talking about 6,200 gallons. Mm -hmm. That's off the top of my head, anyway. Sure. Well, um, but this filter ahead. is also a grid system filter. Mm -hmm. And that means it has to be backwashed periodically throughout the season. No. It's a diatomaceous dirt filter? Well, we've been told is that the only thing that happens is it gives out particles and those get removed, but all the water gets recirculated to the point. The idea is that it's a closed well, system. A grid, a grid system filter has to be washed periodically. Excuse me, I'm sorry. And, uh, dirt cost of all associates, there's a separator tank that's included as part of the system. It's supposed to deal with it. It's not diatomaceous dirt, and it, it's a grid system, and it doesn't it's have a, to be it's that. It's a separator well. tank. The precision obvious tells us. So, so what you're saying is when you and clean uh, the filter, you're not going to discharge any water to the... Correct. Main and this, this, this retention, this small retention reserve mm -hmm. is going to hold this kind of water when you drain that pool a couple times a year? Uh, no, sir, but we, speci we specify the pumping procedure for the pool uh, versus when you close the pool. You can only that with that. Yes, yeah. uh, do it in several stages. Huh? Pump down, fill up the hole, let it drain in, and then they're going to pump again and fill up the, the brush. Yeah, but when you drain it in the wintertime, they, 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 they're, 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 they're basically going to pump it until the uh, depression is full and then stop until it's all drained down, until the depression is drained out, and then pump some more until they, they've got, they, so enough, they just got it down far enough. Okay. Okay. Right, we have a note on, on the plan specifying that procedure. All right. Okay. Richard, um, Reggie Reed, for the record, would you state for the record your credentials about? I don't think that the sediment pond that they're proposing is big enough to hold the extra water that this pool is going to generate and, when and it has to be drained or even worked on. And you, this knowledge comes to you from your expertise as? I, I work with Wet, quite a bit of water, and I used to install swimming pools. And I also, I worked with water my whole life. Okay. Well, uh, depending on the weather, this rain garden is also available. Could be used to receive that pool drawdown water. You need a lot of hose, but it is it is available, and it would be suitable. Um, Pool water is uh, approved for direct discharge. I mean, you can dump it on your lawn. Oh, yeah. So it would be it would be suitable uh, to discharge it over there. I felt I thought that that's kind of a lot of hose for the, to expect the pool guys to use. So we'll provide this facility here. If it's inadequate, they can extend their hose. If they do use the facility you're proposing to bring it down six inches, mm -hmm. you fill it, you stop, you fill it, you stop. How long would that take? It all depends on how fast the water soaks in. I don't have any permeability numbers, but my guess uh, is it would it certainly would soak in in a day. You know, so you're so going to have a couple of days. You're going to have a guy there all day draining the pool. No, yeah, he'll pump the he'll just pump water until, until, until the, the area is full. Then he'll go and do the next job, and he'll come back tomorrow and, and do some more. Is this a vinyl liner pool or a gunite pool? It's gunite pool. To but, die, well, but he's, so you're going to leave it uncovered with no filter running for that period of time while you're draining it. Uh, I'm not a pool guy. Well, see, that's, I mean, I've had a pool, and mm -hmm. the problem is that you want to get that cover on, but normally you put the chemicals in to winterize it. Mm -hmm. You start draining it down, you shut off the pump, and you want to get that cover on as fast as you can mm -hmm. so that debris doesn't blow into the pool. If this guy's going to be coming back a couple of you know, days and you're going to leave the pool uncovered, I mean, I'm just wondering what the technique is that, that you're using here. 
Um, but I'm not trying to be difficult. No, I just no, want to I, see I how realistic it, again, it is to follow that procedure. I, I, I'm not a full guy. All I can say is uh, they have to do it a little at a time. Unless they run a hose over to the rain garden, uh, which will allow them to do uh, more. Um, in fact, um, the, uh, there, there will be a cistern in the lowest level here to receive the, the, the rainwater and, and store some for uh, irrigation purposes. Uh, the overflow from that will go down to the rain garden. Uh, perhaps uh, some sort of uh, um, you know, some sort of manifold will, could be installed in the pipe that goes down to the rain garden to allow a hookup from the uh, pool right on the pump. Well, maybe and, is, would that be a better way to do it then? And maybe that should be on the plant. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm not trying to be difficult, but no. you've got chlorine, you've got stabilizer, you, maybe you have yeah. an ultracide, and it's one thing to well, dump it in the water. It, 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 have it go right same, into the water. Same thing. I thought this would be simpler for the pool guy, um, but... Um, well, it probably is, but I'm worried about it winding up in the seawater there. It's, can I? Sure, sure. I'm John Bennett, and I represent the Wiseman's. It's not going to have chlorine. It's not going to have that kind of a system. And then it's got a, a closed system for, for the equivalent of backwash, and if it needs to be covered, someone will cover it, slide a hose under the edge of the cover, and drain it down in, into any of these optional areas. But it's, it, it is water which can go, can in fact go into the ocean. Okay. Because it yeah. doesn't, isn't Okay, so that it's an ozone treatment or yeah. something like that? So okay. That All that has been thought about in, in, this, in this context. I mean, if the water could go directly into the ocean, then I'm okay. If, if there's no regulations against that. And okay. We're going to try to avoid that. Understood. But, but if it can be, then I'm okay. Okay. <clears throat> Josh? I don't have any questions. Sure. Nice. Walter? Frank? <clears throat> Anyone else have any questions? No, just sign with me. Sorry, sorry. I do have a question. I have a comment. I'm Doug Baldwin, I'm the neighbor across the street. Uh, I also represent the Little Harbor Association. It seems to me maybe you could compromise if you're going to increase the, uh, the rain garden anyway. Um, to put a man full pipe right to that. And you don't need your expression. You're, you're, you're correct. Um, I thought it would be simpler to do this, but it sounds like uh, the general opinion is that that's kind of a waste of time. So, uh, yeah, that's a better idea. We'll have a, uh, a man with a, uh, a connection for the uh, food going on the pump and we'll direct to the rain garden. The rain garden will, it's going to be increased in size anyway. So, uh, that's the most appropriate uh, way to do it. Uh, technique and we've got a few revisions to make and uh, we can add that. I don't know if that affects. He didn't raise it as an issue. That's fine. May I come again? Mr. Chairman, John Bennett again. Just to conclude, unless there are other remarks, you've got a CAM application here. There's no indication of adverse impacts on the coastal resources that are in the area. Uh, this is a reuse of a previously developed site and uh, with all the precautions in place. And I think uh, what you've heard is that everything, including not using chlorine, has been taken into consideration. So there won't be any impacts on the, on the, on the water, on the uh, rock, the, the escarpment, or the beach. And uh, we would ask you to approve it, given that fact that there are no such impacts. Revealed by this point. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, anyone? <clears throat> Last chance. All right, can I get a motion to close? So moved. Second. Second. All's in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I get a motion to. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, can I get a motion to uh, open the change in amendments? Ray, this should go with the other pile of proposed motions. Uh, yeah. Turning the 
But we gotta move so to open to this. Can I get a motion to move to open this? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You're on, Captain. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the record, John Nuff on behalf of DDR Guilford LLC. Um, you'll recall that we were here a year ago to amend your sign regulations. We also got a couple special permits approved. The sign regulation was to um, you know, we got signage uh, approvals that we got some years ago, and included in that sign regulation amendment was our ability to locate some signs on the rear of the building that faces I-95. If you recall, we received approval for, and just to orient you, this is the rear of the building located closest to the um, 95 uh, interchange. And we, you approved signage on the tower, and you approved signage on the middle of the three meter anchors. Those were three foot high meters, right? Exactly. Yep. All we're asking for, this may be the simplest application you've ever heard, is to add one more sign on the rear of that building, which is right here. Because if you recall, our signage regulation referenced a sign diagram or sign plan the sign plan that was approved is this exactly, but without that one sign. So all we're asking is to replace the sign plan that you approved last, I think, July with this one, which adds this junior tenant. Um, and I know there's always been a lot of speculation and wonder from the time we began this project years and years ago as to who the tenants are. And we want to see who they are. We don't actually have to approve this on the front. We've essentially yeah, approved sure. what we've got. The, 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 only thing, like he's the, only thing, the only thing we're asking to approve is amendment to the sign to allow the Michael sign on the back of their building, this space. Are we specifically approving a Michael sign? No, no. 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 <laughs> this, this, I mean, only, this only allows, opens, opens the door for Michaels to submit a sign application to Reggie and then she can approve it based upon that. So we're approving certain spatial dimensions for a sign. Right, exactly that. There. It is 22 feet wide by 6 feet high. And the others are 3 feet high? Well, yeah, because it's based upon square footage. So, um, I mean, we might as well just call them what they are. Fresh Market, you know, their sign is just much wider, so those letters are three feet high, but Michael's has that sort of, you know, the swoopy M, so it's narrower but taller. Of course. Hmm. <clears throat> so all three of the tenants on the back side of the building then will have a sign? Um, the um, Bed Bath & Beyond, which is located on the rear, is there in this location, okay. they'll be on the they're top. The tower. Okay. They won't be on the back. Okay. So without this amendment, then Michael would be, they wouldn't be, right. they wouldn't be able so, to have a sign on the rear of the building. So without this amendment, Michael's would probably be on the tower, which would then eliminate a, a location for another tenant. So really what it does is it helps identify tenants deeper into the, the development you know, that they're located here. So, um, it's one of the things that they, that they very much wanted, you know, a little bit of visibility from 95. Frankly, if you're driving up and down Route 1, I think it's impossible to see, but you will get some visibility from 95 for a brief time. What's that, Rich? <laughs> You know, by, by the way, just a short aside. She wants to do some crafts. Um, <laughs> you can't, uh, don't forget, this is a text amendment, so you have to have two public hearings on this. So we have so this, this is a text happy. amendment, even though they're drawing a diagram. Yes. Well, because the diagram is, is part of our regulation. Right. So, you so have this, is a, this is a zoning text amendment. Correct. What's the select council? Um, Did you want to divulge the other tenants? I'm sorry? Did you want to divulge the other tenants? Uh, not unless Andrew says we can. But, uh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. But I, I mean, I'm just in terms of signage, I just wanted to know that um, uh, one of the tenants had approached Reggie about some really large grand opening sign, and uh, we declined to pursue that just because 
you know, we thought, you know, this is a very tasteful design in terms of the architecture, in terms of the signage, in terms of the entire development. And so we respectfully declined the tennis request for massive grand opening signs. And so um, while we're asking for a little more signage, uh, we try not to, um, you know, go over it. So. Good. More questions? Walter, you got to have a question. I'm counting on you. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, um, d did you tell the tenant, listen, don't risk it. This planning zoning commission is very <laughs> shifty, <laughs> and I think it would be wiser Absolutely if you just not. didn't. <laughs> we told them they're, they're the most business friendly. Maybe <laughs> 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 this may be the last, the last representation you'll ever make to me, counselor. <laughs> and actually, I, I won't even be here in two weeks. I, I have another hearing, but my colleague Megan will be here. So, oh. and, and I know you will treat her with the same affection that you want to treat me. If you would prefer, we can delay this another two weeks so you can be back. I mean, uh, no, I think that's okay. I Megan, think you okay with that? I'm fine with it. Okay, good. I think we moved it. That's second so question. Sure. Someone might very okay. ask for questions. Just yes or no questions. Nobody's going to have any questions. Anyone have any questions? There you go. Anyone with you? Just as simple as one sign. I'll move to continue it to May 20th. All set? Ready a second? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you, Council. Thank you all. Good night. Good night. Good to see you again. Was that it? Yeah. It's only 20 to 9. Mr. Chairman. What's that, sir? Good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Can I get an approval for the revised agenda? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. So uh, let's talk about, let's talk about you and me, Mark Minuet. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move that, um, do you have the motion? We, Wait, yeah. Oh, we actually have it? Go off. Yeah, we have it. Oh, we actually have it? Yeah, we have it. Sweet. We are, we're holding it private now. These are, these are special. These are right. Voted that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission approve a special permit for Mark Minuet. 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 It's like the dance. Yeah. I'm actually putting phonetics over here. Um, Moved, voted that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission approve a special permit for Mark Minuet for property at 748 right. Nut Plains Road, map 86, lot 28, for an office in an accessory apartment building and for an accessory building in excess of 750 square feet as shown on an application dated 3-13-15 and as heard at a public hearing on May 6, 2015. Uh, this is, application is approved with the... <laughs> How fast do you want this meeting to be? You gotta go fast. <laughs> this application, this application is. This application is approved with the following conditions that no blasting will be conducted during construction on the premises. This application is approved based upon a finding that it conforms with the zoning code. The special permit is effective on May 15, 2015, and upon filing with the town clerk. I'll second that. And we can have a discussion about it. Yeah, we probably want to discuss that. Yeah. We probably do. Did, the thing is, we don't say, have. Did you say what, that, was, is that what it says? Yeah, it, oh, yeah, okay. it. We don't have the full data on what this is, and frankly, the lot coverage just does not concern me because it. I mean, the the lot coverage does not concern me because even though it's over 750 square feet, um, the neighbors weren't worried about percentage of lot. Let's say that he withdraws this application for a special permit and then he says, okay, I'm just going to put my driveway in. And he puts his driveway Correct. in. He doesn't need to come before us at all. He could put his driveway in and then he could come to us after he did all his blasting and everything and ask for a special permit to put, put an accessory apartment. That's correct. And so then, then we could approve or deny it. Yes, but so we don't, I mean, if you're, if we are trying to make it difficult for him at that st I mean, I just don't see We're not that. trying to make it difficult for him. He wants a very large three-car office, three-car garage and office. So is and that we have the or the driveway? We have concerns about blasting on the site. This will result that's in, a, because, I mean, if he wants a driveway to nowhere, then that's that's understandable with blasting. But the reality here is right, that but, but you're, you're putting all of the neighbors are concerned You're putting in condition about on a part of it that's really not a, not. Yeah. It's not before us. I mean, he can have the driveway any way he wants it. He wants his garage, so you're going to say, all right. Oh, I'm not talking about just blasting for the driveway. I'm talking about blasting in general. 
including I, for. Well, we have no jurisdiction over how the guy blasts. I mean, so then, it, I mean, that's if, if inaccurate. He, blasts, he could. Well, he doesn't Ray, like the rocks. He could blast the rocks out. Ray, are you representing to this commission that planning and zoning commissions cannot place the condition of no blasting on yeah. a site? Yeah, okay. I am. I mean, how can you? You're going to tell a person they can't blast in their lot for planning and where's where does it say in our regulations you have the right to do that or any statutory i mean there's there is i mean at the beginning of our regulations we can't for the health and well-being of, of for under a special permit you know we I, regulate construction processes but, every day but that's not the point i mean if if we were going to put this condition on him i would recommend i, I mean i wouldn't be surprised if he would withdraw the application altogether put the driveway in, do it whatever way he wants to put the driveway in, come back before us, and then ask for the accessory apartment. I mean, he, there are so many ways like around it that, that I... That would I, certainly be his choice, but then he would be putting a driveway to nowhere, possibly. It just it seems like we're making are you it saying jump that, through. Are you saying you would withhold his approval for the garage if he put the driveway in? No. I'm saying that we would then possibly deny blasting as it pertained to, oh, to the building. The of the building well, maybe, I mean, yeah, maybe if, if there's no blasting required for the building and there's just blasting required for the driveway, then, you know, our position. The you only said, concern is the construction process of blasting. I'm going to ask. It, I think it's not an unreasonable you condition. You want to ask him? Well, I just want to know. We, whether can, whether uh, we can still ask him things. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to. That's a question. Just a question. I just yeah. want to know, just yes or no. I'll raise my hand. Are you going? Where we're proposing to put this? Public hearing is closed. Okay. You can't take testimony. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, why don't we call the question? We've got a motion on the table to. Ray, this. Ray, we already heard the the motion, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So let's call the question. So, so this this question is that we're going to not let them do blasting. And if we vote no for this, we can raise it back up that we can allow it with blasting? Is that procedural? No, I, I don't no, think you that's just that. You just get rid of the condition. Just take the condition off. I guess, I mean, we could ask staff whether or not this is something that the Planning and Zoning Commission can do. Or that we want to do. I mean, I don't know. Well, that's a separate question. Ray was talking about that the fact right, so that we don't actually let's have, not have a Let's not have a wrestling match over whether or not we can do it. Um, the vote is whether or not we want to do it. So let's say well, can is a threshold question. Okay. So let's say we, for the sake of this, let's have the mindset that we can say no blasting. And um, I mean, I, I don't want to put. I personally don't want to put the um, no blasting limit on him. So how do we approach that? Do we vote on yours with the blasting limit? and turn yes. it down and then reintroduce a new one with no blasting limit? Or, or you guys can just tell me that it's not going to work and I can withdraw the condition. Well, logistically, I just don't, I mean, I have a question. If we approve something right now, uh, can they immediately withdraw their application and then our, everything that just happened is sort of null or, or once it's approved, they can't withdraw the application? Special permit. Well, they, yeah, they, they could not file it in the land records. A special permit has to be filed before okay. it becomes effective. So if it's not filed on the land record, it's not effective. And I'm not, never, I've never heard of anyone wanting to withdraw an application after it was approved. Well, I Although can imagine people, a scenario It's where probably it. happened before. I just can't think of an example. Yeah, of that, but, yeah. oh, well, yeah, and then the date. Okay. Right. Um, so I'm not, I don't know the yeah. I'm not sure I have. I well, mean, the, the other way that how about I think the Roberts Rules of Order way to do this would give somebody absolutely to be be the wise, I think. motion that was... Okay, so we, we have a motion. Um, we have a second. I'd like to poll the members that are about to vote Very whether good. they support the blasting contingency to eliminate blasting. <coughs> repeat this. Oh. What is it? Well, repeat, what, repeat your... Uh, do you want just a condition? I want, I, want, I want to see what we're, what we're voting on. Actually. Oh, uh, it's approval of... The plan as as so, submitted, so it's uh, voted that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission approve the special permit, and then it gives the entire details of it. And then this application is approved with the following conditions: and no blasting is allowed on site for this project. And the reason was that was the neighbors' one and only concern. Mm -hmm. They've had difficulties in the past with 
um, but damage to their homes. We haven't had them, everybody complained about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the members of the public, that was really their main They were, we had three neighbors concern. saying that they're concerned that the blasting is going to affect their property. But, but their only other concern. No, basis for that. No, they, I think that they do because they complained that blasting in the past has affected their property. Right, but they're, the guy, the gentleman represented that he's going to use a licensed blaster who yeah. is going to do the, all the measurements before and after and ensure so any damages would be repaired. I just don't see the effect of this, this condition. All right, no, easy. So, would you support the blasting continue, uh, sure. you, yeah. you would allow it. You would allow blasting? Absolutely. Okay. Wait, allow? He, he, he would say he would allow blasting. He doesn't want to go along with your no blasting. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to understand what you okay. want, to, want to do. Right. So, <laughs> you think it's okay if we blast? I think it's wonderful. Okay. Ray? Um, I don't support the motion. I think it's okay to blast. Josh? I'm going to say. Frank? I would not support that motion. Walter, wait, right now you would. Yeah. Right, st you're standing by right now. <laughs> you're going to be standing <laughs> more alone here, too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. All right, I would like to amend the motion to remove condition one, which is the only condition, which is blasting, I'll and resubmit the motion. And then I'll resubmit. All right. Okay. All those in favor? <laughs> Hi. Congratulations. Blast away. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Be gentle with the neighbors, okay? Please. Be gentle with the neighbors. Sally Ziskin, not Michael, just Sally. Um, what happened? Oh, let's see what we got here. Go? All right, yep. No uh, voted that the Gilbert Planning and Zoning Commission approve a special yeah. permit for an accessory apartment for Sally and Michael Ziskin at 579 Lake Drive, Map 63, Lot 41, as shown on an application dated 4 1 15, and as heard as a public hearing, <coughs> at a public hearing on May 6, 2015. Uh, this application is approved based on a finding that it conforms with the zoning code section 27319. The special permit is effective on May 15, 2015, and upon filing with the town clerk. So I want to second that? Second. Any other discussion? It's within the house, so. Pretty cut and dry. Yeah. In the house. In the house, that's <laughs> <it. laughs> no, no addition. <clears throat> Call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Um, <coughs> do we have a motion for Russo Real Estate? Russo. What's your right here? Russo. Russo. <coughs> Ooh, Austin Street. Mm. No, I don't know if we do. Let me check here. But I think that yeah, it was a pretty. I, I, I can make the it from one, the. If I read the bottom component of. Yeah. Of that um, motion we just read. Move to approve the modification of the special permit granted uh, November 19th, 2014 for dwelling units in industrial zone to reduce the number of apartments from four to two apartments uh, with no conditions. This um, modification is approved upon a finding that it conforms with the zoning code. Location? Did you say? Here. Oh, no, I was just saying on that. Oh, yes, at 421 Boston Street, map 48, lot 54, zone I-2. Sex. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Here we go. All right. Uh, voted the Gil... Oh, I'm sorry. Was supposed to say something? No. No, no go Can for I get a motion from Ms. Weissman? Yeah. yeah. Voted that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission approve a coastal area management site plan for Mayor Weissman, 117 Andrews Road, map 12, lot 76B, for a new residence shown on coastal site plan property of Mayor Weissman. Three sheets, including landscape plan, dated November 11, 2014, revised to May 5, 2015, and architectural plans. Rich and Mayor Weissman, nine sheets prepared by Duffield Design Group, dated 2 26 15. This application is approved with the conditions. Um, Gouchers? Well, yes. And Kevin. Dirt. So Kevin's is kind of nebulous. Kevin just says some trees. Boy. No, this is these Kevin three conditions. Yes. They well, really why don't we have, I just approve it with Kevin's conditions, yes. then that would be his John incorporated. Yeah. 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 So with. Uh, I'm going to read them. Condition one, the town of Guilford zoning enforcement officer should be notified to inspect the sedimentation and erosion control measures prior to any site work. Soil stockpiles 
should be contained by silt fencing and or hay bales, soil erosion and sedimentation, sedimentation control measures shall be maintained until the vegetation is established or suitable material is installed to the satisfaction of the zoning enforcement officer. Two, landscape plan be revised to show additional native shrubs to be installed on the hillside between native cedars and the proposed planta plantings above the cottage to provide a protective buffer to Little Harbor. Three, revise the plans, revised plans be submitted to the zoning <coughs> enforcement officer addressing the concerns of John Goucher, CTDEP, mm -hmm. prior to the issuance of a building permit. <coughs> this application is approved based upon a finding that conforms with the zoning code and is consistent with the coastal management policies of the state of Connecticut. You were going to upsize the uh, detention. Uh, the well, so I, I sort of, I said that okay. number three was John mm -hmm. Goucher says okay. incorporate everything. So and do we need to include that pipe that we discussed as opposed to the depression that Mark Young said was no problem going to the rain garden, correct? Yeah. I think. Uh, I, I mean, it's, it's do we actually need to include? Do, do we want to include it? Does it work? Well, no. I mean, he said it he was. Put it, he should put it in anyway. I, right. I would he said he was that. fine. The applicant is so the fourth, he wants to put it in. All right. The, yeah. The fourth condition. Is not the fourth condition is you invite us over to. Is, is, no, uh, we're taking uh, input from the applicant the right now. The fourth condition is not <laughs> inserting a pipe. Right. We got it. All right. Okay. Yeah. So second. Great. All right. So. Um, what else? Anything else? That's it. That's it. Yeah. Build your house. This, right. this house is this house actually conforms with the Connecticut Coastal right. Management Act. So, all right. It's all very those exciting. In, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for building your house in Guilford. Appreciate Thank you for building your house in Guilford. We appreciate your being here. It's it's sound sound. Sound. All right. Oh, the sign thing. I you know. We take a second hearing May 20th. There you go. We did that. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, oh, oh. 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 BDK Alliance, the Hickory Kitchen. Hickory Kitchen. We even go up, or you guys? No, we will. Do you, do you want to come up? You want to tell us? We always like to hear stuff. Here all night. <laughs> okay, oh, you might as well. Do a little dance for us. <laughs> Whatever you got. Yeah, right. So this is. Um, Introduce yourself. Jane Carney. Kelly Carney. We own uh, Casey's Restaurant and Pub. Oh. You better like that. What kind of sound is That's good. <laughs> the problem the time is I eat there and I can't wait. wait. So that's the problem. 1642. So what are you doing? You're putting in the Hickory Kitchen where? Uh, in the second at 725 Los Bus Road. We're going to take over another one of Angelo's units. Yep. And currently it was a uh, physical therapy for adolescents. And so we need to do a change of use to his company of meals to go. Retail. Okay. That's cool. I'm sorry, which complex is 725 Boston Post Road? Goodwill and the haircut place. Napa. Napa. And, Napa. and you're talking about in back. Zeus yeah. in the back. Yep. So this is uh, the the former Chips pub. No. No. <laughs> what I mean is nothing. Past your current establishment. Yep. Working backwards yeah, towards Zeus. Zeus. We own KC's in the back. Uh, but the, yes. we're taking over one of the other units okay. that Angela owns. You had three of them. Closer to unit one. Interesting. And so the use, so this change of use has to come before us, just yes. like all these other ones. Yes, we look at all of them to make sure that it meets parking yeah. requirements, septic, everything. So we're cool with the parking, yes? Yes. There's yeah. vast What's parking. What's going to happen is there. we're going to close KC's for lunch uh, when the yes. kitchen's open, so we've got 42 spaces in the back. The ones on the side are first come, first serve. There's no... Uh, so it's only going to be open at lunchtime? 10 to like 6 p.m. Yeah. We're doing a salad bar, soup station, and then meals to go. So, kind of an in and out sort of thing. Any, any tavern? I'm sorry? Any tavern license? No. No, no you guys are over sit sit the the place. Sit sit the bottom of that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no seating? No seating. So it's no all seating. to go only. Uh -huh. Okay, I get it. People like our food, but they don't have time to sit and eat at KC, so. We're also going to sell like Connecticut beef, sauces, olive oil, things like that. So um, we retail shops. Cool. Well, good. Good luck with that. 
All right, so um, do we have any other questions for these nice folks? Mm -hmm. I can make a motion. Let's make the motion. Yeah. All right. Voted that the Gilbert Planning and Zoning Commission approve a site plan application for a change of use for BDK Alliance at 725 Boston Post Road, Map 47, Lot 7, to convert from physical therapy to retail sale of prepared foods as shown on application dated April 25th, 2015. This application is approved based upon a finding that it conforms to the zoning code. Give a second. 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 Um, all those in favor. What, what's the name of it now? Physical, physical, physical therapy. therapy. What's, what's, therapy? therapy? What's, what's the name of it? It's, it's empty. empty. It's a former. Oh, it's empty. It's an empty yeah. unit. Oh, okay, because there's, there's a physical. It wasn't yeah. That's what it was. That's why we're doing it. George, the, the, the configuration behind the Goodwill is kind of yeah, weird. Yeah, I know and, where it is. Yeah. Thank you. Well set? Okay, yep. all, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations, and thank you for having your business in town. All right, this next one. Frank, you need to recuse Mr. yourself. Yeah, I would like to recuse myself. There you go. Thank you. Too. Looks like you're on. Keep you're on for this one, Richard. Oh, on this one. Yeah, feel, free to, feel free to vote no. But you don't have to vote Thank yes. You. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, Reggie Reed for uh, DeAndrea Development. Uh, this is a change of use from a recreational facility. It was a Pilates. A recreational facility to a retail use. That's it. <laughs> That's it. And it meets all the requirements. <laughs> all the boxes are checked. Yeah, that yes. Yes. That's what we want to know. Parking is fine, uh, and nothing else changes except it's Can going to be retail yeah. instead of exercise facility. You know where this is? It's just to the west of uh, where it's all jammed in so tight. Between, we'll get between, between the Dunkin' yes. Donuts. Right next to Dunkin' Donuts. 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 So it's the existing right. building <laughs> as it stands. Okay. Yep. How can parking possibly be fine with the drive-through exiting onto the NRX in it's the minimum. It's the minimum. This you commission the approved that. You had the parking for the Pilates studio anyhow, and this would yeah. probably be even more transient than that. This, How did this commission approve that? Well, actually, uh, that building is new. It was recently rebuilt, probably about five years ago. Yes. Yeah. And it was an improvement to the situation that they had before. Because what was the reason before? they bought the property and really? developed it was so that they could allow the drive-through customers to flow Make through right the right. property next door right. where this is and out onto Route 1 instead of the way they were having to go before that. And they, they, they do flow through, but I wouldn't call it flow. Right, here's, here's the situation. Oh, it does. There's nothing we can deny this on. He's met the zoning code. Yep. There is no way. I just don't understand how there are enough parking spaces or, or enough feet. space. That's the thing that just has left me baffled about this site When for the building years. was constructed, they made sure that they met the parking requirement. Okay. And it does. There's parking on the side of the building. There's parking, parking on the along the side. Had, I mean, for re retail the road. Bodies, I mean, you probably have 15 people go to a lot of these classes that are going to sit there for a few hours. This, yeah. Oh no, it's not. The, I mean, yeah, the it's volume the doesn't increase. Yeah. It's not increasing. It's going to be more transient. Oh no, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm actually voting yes. I'm just baffled by how the thing exists. You're probably going to want to go there and get this vaping <laughs> supply stuff so you can vape. I really wanted to go to the Pilates place, but so I didn't have the money the because it was a super high-end Pilates was place. Was it really? Yes, it was where the cool people went. Yeah, I'm not cool. It made me very sad. Well, we recommend now it's going to be a uh, place where you, you know, get the electronic cigarettes. That's the yeah. store it's going to oh. be. That's the vapor, huh? It's the cigarette vapor. Yeah, it's the vapor. Yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> it's Frank's vapors. So we recommend that you approve this application. Of course you do. I'll make a motion. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe, go ahead, make that motion. I have, why don't, I have a stackable. Why don't you let me second? It, Mr. Chairman. Okay. That Voting that the Government Planning and Zoning Commission approve a site plan yes, application for a change of use for DeAndre Development LLC, 534 Boston Post Road, Map 48, Lot 21, to change from recreation facility to retail use as shown on application date 5415. This application is approved based upon a finding that conforms with the planning or the zoning code. There you go. Second. There you go. Walt. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Frank's gonna love you now. He's, no. He's gonna, yes. It's gonna change You're right. the whole relationship. You're right. Different dynamics. That's what'll happen. Change gonna have to change the change. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. Someone wanna go get Frank? Congratulations. Yes. 
Absolutely. <laughs> okay, uh, Shannon, you want to change tapes while we're in a taking a break? We're going to take a quick break. So, no business. And welcome back. We have not conducted any business nor had any discussions while the cameras were off, and we're going to go right back into our meeting. We have uh, Sachem Wine and Spirit. Finally got to you. Want to come down and uh, tell us anything? My name is Rick D'Angelo. I'm one of the owners of Sachem Wine and Spirit. And what I'm going to do is I have to get an extension permit of my liquor permit, have wine tastings in the offices upstairs. Are you inviting any of us? Or? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Right, so we're approving the expansion. serving of wine upstairs? No, no, expansion. Not serving. Not serving. No, not serving. Just taste it. Taste it. it it's, it's part of the retail store. Yeah. Sip it. The state requires that I get a permit extension. <laughs> okay. So you're going upstairs? Yes. In the we're not going to sell upstairs. No. But if someone wants to have a wine tasting, We'll have one up on the second floor rather than in the store. I got it right here. Hang out. We're going to do this right, right. now. Voted that the Gilbert Planning and Zoning Commission approve a site plan application for change of use of Sachem Wine and Spirit at 1795 Boston Post Road, Map 79, Lot 3, for a change of use from office to retail liquor store as shown on an application dated 5 8 15. This application is approved based on a finding that conforms to the zoning code. Second. Any other discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Congratulations. Good luck with it. Now we take it. Okay. We are received. Okay, can I get a motion to receive Village Green Gardens? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We need to set any dates on. Ah. Uh, can I get a motion to receive Women and Family Life Center? So for moved. yoga classes. And offices. Uh, we have a motion. Uh, any seconds? No. Second. All right, there you go. Any all those in favor? All right. H Hardware, 223B Boston Street. Uh, That's also received. Yep. Can I get a motion to receive that? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Barbara and Sandra Lombardi. Bernard. Ber Bernard. Bernard and Sandra Lombardi. Sorry, uh, Bernard. This is a actually. It's a spe this is a special permit. <coughs> so. I ask you to receive and set 6-3 is a public hearing. So can I get a motion to set 6-3 as the date? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Go for surgery. Oh. Receive it. Just receive. You know, not take action? No. no. Thank you for the design review. Design so moved. Second. Aye. Wait a minute. I don't quite understand what this proposal is. You know, they're going to have surgery under a tent? No. Yeah. Just, no. Okay. <laughs> The canopy over. Huh? It's a canopy over the entrance to the building. Well, wait a minute. This, this is a, a surgery center. Yeah. Yeah. Bring in a. There's a trampoline yeah. convention well, coming to town. Yeah. So we just want to be ready with a triage center. Get them in the tent, quick. You know, the, they had those tents up in the past. Okay, let's go. Aye. No, I'm sorry. Call the question. There you go. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Special permits. Edwin Albert. Oh. This is the one that's on the corner, right next to the Women and Family Health Center. No. Well, he's leaving there. This is moving up to a new location. He, this is uh, Boston. It's moving on up. He's going east on Boston. Actually, he's, chairman. he's scaling down a little bit, actually. But. Where's, where's 350? Uh, I'd like to move to receive and set a public right hearing for. Comfort in. Up the hill. Yeah, yeah that's uh, did you make that motion, sir? No, I, did. I don't think I did. <laughs> Receive and set public hearing for June 3rd, 2015 at the oh, okay. Guilford Community Center at uh, 7.30 for Edwin C. Alberg, 350 Boston Post Road, Map 49, Lot 7, Zone R3, application for a special permit for home handicraft industry, section 273-38B in an auxiliary building in the existing garage on premises. Can I get a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Boy, you Mr. Two, you two are Chairman, bonded. I would this is like good. to 
I hope it's Jeremy Beckett Stevenson, a public hearing of June 3rd, 2015 at 7.30 Where? at the Guilford Community Center for Teresa O'Freddy, 10 Paddock Lane, Map 34, Lot 42, Zone R3, converting existing screen porch to a three-season yeah, room nice. area, 8 feet by 10 feet. Section 273-101F, and I'd like to put that in the form of a motion. Second. Second. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move to receive instead of public hearing of June 3rd, 2015 at 730 in the Guilford Community Center for Renee Landry, 50 Harbor View Road, Map 12, Lot 63, Zone R2, special permit for 500 square foot uh, accessory apartment in lower level of existing dwellings. Section 273-99, I'd like to put that in the form of a motion. So moved. Second. No. Richard seconded it. <laughs> you have to second it. Second. Yeah. There you go. All those in favor. And then we didn't vote on the other one. You want to vote on the other one since you made, you Teresa just went Alfredi. for an excellent yes. Teresa Alfredi. Yes. All those in favor of Teresa? Uh, Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, zoning amendments. No. No? Coastal site plan. Latola. And Gugliotti. I'm going blind. I'd like to make a move that Steve Rattula and Lisa yep. Gugliotti. Yes. 7 Rock Point Lane, Map 24, Lot 1, Zone R3, Coastal Area Management Cycling, Special Permit for Addition to House and PRD, 273-91, 273-101F, Receive and Set a Public Hearing, date of June 3rd, 2015. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> It's nice Getting for you. Tired. Good reading. <laughs> All right. Zoning amendments. Now we can do zoning amendments. Are you free? That's Reg. Mm -hmm. Create new zoning district. Mixed use conservation three. What does that mean? Receiving said public hearing date. Do we know what conservation three means? Yes. You don't want to tell us now, though, do you? There's conservation one. Discuss it now. Well, it's MUC one, MUC two, and this is the new one. No, it's perfect. And we're going to have a hearing on stellar. It does, although it, it's pretty much the same as MUC 1 and 2, except that it doesn't have the uh, uh, restriction on housing that you have to be 55 or older. Okay. I'll, I'll move the motion. Uh, do we have a second on Josh's moving of the motion? I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the Guilford Agricultural, Agricultural yeah, Society. Yeah, they have uh, some big thing going on at the fairgrounds, don't they? Um, not big thing. They're informing us of uh, three events on September 2nd. Uh, was described as Adam's Scrimmage. Adam's Middle School Scrimmage. It's uh, some kind of sporting event, I guess. Late afternoon till dusk on 9, 9 to 15. On 10-26-15, there's a cross-country meet, Adams Cross Country, late afternoon until dusk. And on 11-28, there's another uh, Guilford High School alumni meet. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of an event that is, but. Well, see, that's a good question, isn't it? Because if it's gonna, well, it's, it's the middle of November. It's not gonna be outside 28, I think it's some kind of a. It's probably running. Like a cross, cross, yeah, cross country. Cross country, guys about. getting back together. Right, I think that's what it is, yes. It's 11 right. 28, I don't know what day of the week that is, but. I, I guess. It's in their news. It says afternoon. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess the one thing I would worry about is, you know, when they send stuff like this over, and I think it's great that they're letting us know, but they're not really letting us know what it is. Um, I mean, I, I would assume that it's probably some sort of track thing. Oh, actually, track. I'm sorry. In the heading to the to the uh, memo to me, the dates of school races. So they're all running. They're all running events. Uh, okay. Car races. Yeah. But that's one of the approval things. The approved things is a car show. So no, these are car, not race car races. These are. These are. I think they also country. have crab and three-legged races. Okay. <laughs> Three-wheel race. So, do we need to say yes to that? Or no, I think the way we left that is that we just want to be informed of it. If it's a problem, then we will let Good. them know that it's a problem. But that works out much nicer. And, yeah. and you don't have to act on it. I'm glad that they're doing it because yeah. that just right. makes it easier for everybody. Right. Okay. Um, discussion of rentals listed on Airbnb. What is this about? Uh, there's a new uh, way of renting part of your house, part of your garage, whatever yep. in your attic. Uh, you advertise on Airbnb, it's a website, and I've noticed that uh, there are some people in Guilford who are advertising there. I know and, three. And renting, um, you know, rooms by the weekend or the day or whatever it is. And I would like the commission to give me some direction on how to regulate this. We do have 
a bed and breakfast regulation, which I think it really falls under. Although I understand from an article that was recently written in the paper about a prominent citizen that they uh, do not give breakfast, but they I do encourage give. people to go out in the green to eat that breakfast. Yeah, yeah. I read the same article. But I, I would like some direction from the commission. Well, how is it any different than the current B and Bs that are rented through advertising? I don't think what, it is. What are your concerns? Well, because this is sort of a new thing that's come about, and there are a lot of people who are renting rooms from their home, but they're not getting a special permit from us for a bed and breakfast. Ah. And then there are other people who have gone through the time and trouble <laughs> to get special permits from us. We require a special permit for a bed and breakfast now. We do. So what, what, are, what, what do we define a bed and breakfast? Is the definition of a bed and breakfast in here? Well, bed and breakfast is you there's rent a room to someone. There's a chapter that oh, they can uh, know. I'd like to know what it means. You can feed them. <laughs> you can't have serve meals to the general public. But you can serve meals to your guests in your house. You can charge them a night fee or whatever. So if you don't feed them, it's not a bed and breakfast? Is that what you're saying? Well, no, it's a bed and bath, but you're still. <laughs> so then you want me to, to look well, at that as rooms right. to let? Well, yeah, I'm just trying to figure yeah, out. I mean, there. My first impression is they should be held to the same standard that we make other people who yes. advertise in the newspaper yeah. or however they do it. But the only question I really have, how do you enforce this? I mean, yeah. do you, are you going to look at home different websites? or I mean, that's the. Go to Airbnb, the ads are right there. Well, but there may be other things eventually that. That's just one website. There may be others. I'm thinking that at some point that will offer this, and what do we do? Cruise them all and see well, who's doing it. How could we justify not holding them to the same standard well, just because I, they advertise? Yeah, and I'm just saying, how would we find out and enforce it across? You know, somebody would complain it. about it. A neighbor would complain. Hey, it looks I, like my neighbor has the right. I mean, there are two ways you could go. One is you could just say, well, let's take the whole regulation yeah, out and let anybody do it. Okay, or you can't say these people should be conforming to it, but if they're doing it and there hasn't been any complaints, I wonder, you know, how much we need the reg anymore. Is there well, anything we probably in the insurance or like that? I don't know. No, I, I, I don't know. There's no, is, is there a Guilford tax on those bed and breakfast, or like a municipal tax on those bed and breakfast? I don't know. You'd have to talk so, to the assessor. I don't think there's any probably local not. tax. There's probably yes, well, that's there's right. Probably there is certainly a state so. tax. Probably. I, I would just be concerned that it doesn't, what they're doing doesn't necessarily fit under our definition or state definition or some definition of what a bed and breakfast is, and then we're over regulating. Well, that would okay, be my but, but on the same side of that, what if um, this permitting process, which we currently have, holds them to some sort of standard? And I don't know what that is, but let's say that if you're up on the third floor, there has to be two means of egress yeah, I mean, or uh, a fire escape it, letter. What it's if, all good, but we just need to figure out if, if, if what they're doing, if someone is renting a room once a month or once every three months or once a week, I, I just think that there probably is a standard for what is considered. Well, then we can put them under the rooms to let. Yeah, then that's fine. Regulation. Fine, then that, that would work just as And that's well. a special permit. We have that's that. Perfect. Yeah, so then that's So what, what do you do about the people that are currently renting out rooms? Well, I'll contact them. Um, if the commission thinks that this is something we want to regulate, and we want to regulate it under, I don't know, bed and breakfast or rooms to let, um, and and ask them if they would make a special permit application to the commission. Do you know what other towns are doing? Have you That's heard, heard about this? Ask. You know, it, it's this. just cropped up, like a lot of things crop up on the internet, and. Some of the towns are trying to regulate this as they come across them, or they get complaints from neighbors. Because I heard the bigger problem is in like the cities and stuff, where people are really taking business away from hotels and established bed and breakfasts, and the town or the city is not receiving their revenue that they otherwise would receive as taxes. So are we trying to regulate this for safety purposes? Or are we trying to regulate this for, you know, somehow having the Board of Selectmen creating some sort of tax in Guilford on 
municipal taxes so that you know people are registered and, and, and the town can start collecting taxes. Well, I, just, I don't know about I, that. I mean, we're planning and I think, you know, I, I understand that, but I just don't understand. I, for me, I, I don't really understand that. I how. think I, we probably were regulating it so it doesn't get out of hand because well, it's wonder. a residential area usually. Yeah. And if you get yeah. eight rooms and you get eight different people there with the traffic and a party, yeah, there were those issues, I think, why we talked about it. Were any of you on the commission when the bed and breakfast was proposed up on Norton Town Road? It was a huge controversy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I wasn't here so, then, but I remember reading about it. I mean, Lanning Zoning turned it down, if I'm not mistaken. They did. My suggestion yeah. would be maybe just go to the zoning committee or something where they could spend a little more Stop time now. looking into this and see what the regs are. Should they apply to this? I, I think they, off the top of my head, they should. Okay, they should be held to the same standards. But maybe there's, as Josh points out, there's a different definition or something this falls under. But that would be what I would do, is have them spend a meeting going through this, maybe seeing what other towns are doing, if there's any, you know, maybe do a quick Google search to see what people are doing with this. So it's almost like the uh, taxis. Yeah, uh, Uber. Yeah, Uber. Yeah, Uber. Yeah, where you're getting the same kind of a problem. Well, and it, got, <laughs> you know. I can do that, but we do have two regulations that this could fall under. It could fall under a bed and breakfast, or it could fall under rooms to let. Yeah, and that's what I, I, I guess maybe the first place to start is to look at two of them and see what, you know, maybe some of the people are offering breakfast, maybe some of them aren't, and maybe that causes... Well, I think the, the issue the is your, yeah. what you brought up about traffic is a bigger thing. Well, that, I mean, that's probably why we regulated it, so there wasn't a public nuisance or a parking issue or something yeah. like that. This is probably why this regulated the first I'll take place. it to the zoning committee. Yeah. I mean, I would be, my suggestion where it could be looked at in depth and then they can come back with a recommendation. Or I could actually look at both regulations yeah. Yeah. and maybe Please. email the commission. But then yeah, that'd be fine, too, just so we... <laughs> and maybe a suggestion or where you think this should head. I think I think he's a think pets and all those yeah. things that can happen. I think uh, when you had something like that. Right, and if it gets out of hand. Uh, yeah, so I would think that they, do they, uh, Ricky, do they have contracts when they go into this bed and breakfast? You're saying that? Uh, sure, through the uh, website. Yeah, I yeah, the website, you pay, so you, that's not what, that's not, we don't get a copy of that. Usually you pay for your, um, your stay, you know, whatever it is, $80 a night or whatever it could be, and you also pay a cleaning fee. Mm -hmm. First and last. The thing first is, is when you yeah, start doing this, first <laughs> this <laughs> better, yeah. the <laughs> fact that this is advertised on the internet has absolutely no impact on what the use is or how it's being sold. If if people advertising rooms to let for the night is a B and B, then these people are advertising rooms to let for the night. Yeah, they usually put a There's nothing. The there's nothing special. There's nothing that changes that that fact just because it's being advertised on the internet. Right. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't disagree with Walter at all in principle. I just want to make sure you know which one of the two regulations they regulate them under. Yeah, that's all. I mean, if if we hold a zoning committee meeting, the three of us who are already sitting here. Plus, Mark White are going to say that probably. I mean, I don't want to speak for him, obviously, but. All right, so, so you know what? Just have a meeting and discuss it and then come back with your yeah, opinion. Yeah, that'll be fun. That's easy. Um, all right, so there's one more thing. Um, Reggie and I have been spending hours of her time doing this week. Um, and I'd like to ask your opinions about something and then maybe, if you agree, maybe discuss how to make it happen. We have. Um, we have a really beautiful town. You know, this town is just has so much going for it. And people who run businesses want to run their businesses here, and that's great. I want them to be successful. I want them to make a lot of money. I want them to be happy. Because I'd like to go down to the store and get a nice cup of coffee or get my gas tank full or go to the cleaners. It's convenient. However, one of the problems is that I live here and I want to take care of this town and I want to make it stay beautiful. And some of the people who run businesses couldn't care less. They they do things to this town that make it look miserable. And so Reggie and I have been going over this for the last couple of days because she has to get in control of something that gets out of control all the time. And it's these stupid little signs. And they know that they shouldn't have it on the sidewalk. They know that it should be down by the curb. They know where these things should be. We, we have this um, 
restaurant that really exemplifies healthy food and, and the American way and it's in our town and they put up a four foot by ten foot banner and she asked them to take it down because they don't have any permits for it and they took it down. One week later they put it back up. It was a surprise. They didn't know. And so um, in particular she's over at the Shoreline Plaza today because there were 16 signs out that looked horrendous. I had a friend from out of state come this weekend and he was mocking this town because of the signs. He was making fun of us and I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. And so we have regulations and the problem is, is that Reggie only has eight hours a day. And so she has more than enough to do. She has so much to do that she can't keep up with it. And so I asked her today and I asked George today to consider the idea of, you know what, all right, if you don't know, we're going to write you a letter and we're going to ask you to please move your sign. But if in the next 90 days, let's say, you decide that you need to put your sign back out knowing that you're just going to get another letter and she'll forget about it because she's handling the other signs. If you put something back out in 90 days, maybe you deserve a fine. And maybe it's nothing big, maybe you know, $150, whatever it is that we do. But somewhere or another, not make her cite the guy, write a letter, come to us, say, all right, you know what, I, I gave this guy this letter and he put the sign right back out. And we say, all right, you know, here you have our permission to go after him. What, I, what I'd like to discuss is giving her the authority now, tonight, to say to the folks that if you put these signs back out within a period of time, and I'd like it to be within 90 days, then you get a fine. You don't get a letter the next time. Um, you know, Ray, I spoke with you about it. Yeah. What are I mean, your thoughts? Yeah. Well, I would agree in principle with it. The only question I have is, does, is it the Board of Selectmen who has to Put it or, I mean, can only, uh, this would, would just be under the auspices of a zoning violation <coughs> fine, right? Which you have the authority to do, as it is. Well, I have to ask the commission. Each time. Commission. Okay, so this isn't a new fine. This is a fine that no. already authorized to grant. Yeah, I don't have any problem with it. Can, That's the your, only vehicle that you have, I think, is uh, the... In your years as a zoning enforcement officer, how many times have you given someone a fine for a sign? Uh, I have You never. I have okay. But it, it is true that, it, as Richard said, the A-frame signs are, uh, well, they, they can almost be a forest of signs. What happens is, take for instance the Shoreline Plaza, which is what he was talking about. They're allowed to have four signs out on the street. And the Planning and Zoning Commission at one time only allowed one sign per property. But the merchants came to us in that plaza about, I don't know, six, eight years ago, and they said, look, we're a big plaza. We have so many feet of frontage. Can't we have more than one sign? And the commission, in its infinite wisdom, was very fair and said, you know what? We think you're right. We agree with you. And at that time, there was a downturn in the economy, and the commission was very... Um, very mindful of that and they want to help the merchants so they said okay if you have a hundred feet of frontage you can have one sign in front of your, your plaza or or your gas station or whatever it is if you have 200 feet of frontage you can have two signs and for every hundred foot thereafter you can have another sign up to four so what's happened is all these stores have a-frame signs of some sort. They either stand on uh, a little brace and, you know, the sign could be like this or they're an actual A-frame. And so what they've done at the Shoreline Plaza is they've put them on the sidewalk in front of their store. So why should we object to this? Well, for one thing, it increases the signage that that store has once they stick that sign on the sidewalk in front of the store because they're all maxed out. They have the biggest signs that they could have, the, the, lit, the red letter lit signs that they have uh, over their storefronts. The other thing is it's a tripping hazard for pedestrians. I mean there are some people who they're not they're not <coughs> looking this way, they're looking this way. Uh, the third problem in that plaza, and this is inherent with the plaza, is they should have blade signs perpendicular blade signs all the way down. They used to have them. Years ago. And they redid the plaza and they never reinstituted it, but they should all have blade signs. So if I'm standing in front of Richard's door, 
I could look down and say, oh yeah, Naples is there. I, visually, I could see it. I could see where Harstan is and all the others. I understand that, yeah. and, and obviously something needs to be done. But I don't think picking on the business community, I mean, you obviously aren't, we don't give up, we don't find people on a regular basis here in Guilford. I mean, it's not something that no, we, we no, do. No, I only do it if they're so yeah. persistent and I, they I just feel, don't comply. I feel like the better way to get this done is change our regulations back to what it was, as, you know, to one sign or, or change our regulations and then enforce that rather than just finding people on a regular basis. I, I just think that that impedes business in Guilford and, and it's, it's a bad thing. I think that there are other ways to get this done and I think you'll be unfairly treating business owners when we don't normally find other violators of the zoning code. I mean, it's well, not... Well, we do. We do, but it, ta it takes a they while. They have to be really it's not bad. just It's not just putting a sign out again after you tell them to put it I, back in. I have a suggestion um, and I think we can approach this before we decide to start finding things. I think we could talk to the EDC mm -hmm. and ask them mm -hmm. if they could get the word out to their people, their, their business people, to be mindful of signage. And I think we could also talk to the chamber and ask them if they, because the chamber uh, does last emails about three, four times a week. I think we could talk to the chamber and ask them if they would put something out Ryan McLellan, I'm sure, would put something out. He has a great email list. And let's see if we can, you know, kind of get the word out to these stores. Reggie, is there any regulations in effect now? Yeah. And do you think that the shop owners don't know those regulations? You know, when the store next to you puts a sign out, you, you walk and say, oh, they got their sign out. Okay, I'll put mine out, too. You know, and it just sort of becomes... So... What You're happens. in favor of a soft approach is to ask first I and would, then would, see if they comply? Yeah, I would talk to EDC and I would talk to the chamber first and see if they could help us. But that's this. a reason for and you. And educate their, the store owners all over again. And maybe we can even put a little um, article in the newspaper talking about this too. I mean, I could write something. And you could prove it. And, and isn't there so that, well, so we no, first? Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's try that yeah. first. We could do. But the thing is that really, that's a reason for you not to utilize this power that we can give you to streamline this process right now. The, well, currently, see. it's there's a sort of a round robin effect where effectively someone can avoid enforcement forever. Uh, with our with the way we've got the enforcement set up right now, whereas if we set up the enforcement that if you you know receive a letter and then go back to the bad behavior within 90 days, then you receive a fine. Obviously, these people once once these other softer approaches have been employed, they'll know that and they won't do this. And of course, you don't have to find them within 90 days if you think that they are not yet, you know, not yet understanding or ready to comply and then once of course they really you know are actually playing a game then this actually would provide the opportunity to actually enforce our regs well, so there's really no reason we couldn't just give you this power because you still wouldn't be required to enforce instantly or even within a longer period of time it's right, it, was, well it wouldn't taken. kick in until you first said, here's a letter, listen, it looks terrible, take it away. And they would have to consciously say, you know what, that's just Reggie Reed. We'll ignore her, she's busy with it's other things, Reggie. we'll put the sign back out in 30 days. You wouldn't, this wouldn't even go into effect until they did something really stupid like that. Well, and, and as I said to you yeah. today, um, it was almost a year ago that they all got the same letter they got today. Right. So that it, then, then you know what? I've been looking at these signs for months. I, you know, it, it, it's not that they just put them out today. I, I can tell you that through the winter, whenever I walk down there, except for the dollar store, everyone else has these signs. <laughs> the dollar store is complying perfectly and never has a problem. We don't um, have to advertise any special prices. That's right. Everything's always good. Walmart doesn't put signs. No, Walmart does not. Although they have made a, an art form of putting the stuff out in front of the store. I mean, they, <coughs> God bless them. They have approval. Markers. And they, Big Y doesn't. Uh, well, Big Y, they have a problem. You know, I, I told you 
that they're authorized for 50 feet and that I walked off on Monday how much they had out front and it was 80 feet. Um, and and what, yeah, uh, what caught my attention was they had like this car big cardboard box of these frozen icicle things and a couple of them were ripped open and the syrup was running across the sidewalk and the stickiness was tracking in and I was thinking, boy, Guilford's looking great today. Well, they're not there anymore. Okay. They, sure. they were taken in when I started. Okay. Can I ask a question here? Assistant, yes. With the, with the signs, so a business owner wants to put up an A-frame sign. He's already met the allotment on his building or on the, on the facade that he's renting. His pylon sign is taken. Right, right. So doesn't he come and fill out an application and say, I want to do a sign and we have to temp pay a fee. And if you no, no, they don't pay a fee for uh, if no, But it's sign. a temporary, like a three month, how does it happen? Uh, the they fill out a yearly sign, a yearly temporary sign permit application. And that allows them to, if they're the only business on the property, to have that sign out 365 days a year. Okay. If there's more than one business, somebody on the property needs to regulate who puts their signs out when. Right. And there's no fee associated with that? No, no fee. And also a business can have a banner displayed up to 10 weeks a year. And there's no fee for that. Or special sales. Yeah, you know, whatever they want. So remember, you know, we are already promoting the local businesses by changing what we had as sidewalk sales from, I think, 12 to 42 or something. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we are already, we're bending over backwards to try and help them through this tough economic time by helping them put stuff on the sidewalk. This is not that case. This is, you know, an egregious disregard for making this town look nice. And I understand they don't live here. I understand they could care less what this town looks like as long as they can make their money. I don't, I don't see it that way at all. I mean, I, obviously the reason they're out there is because it brings more business in. And that's what businesses want to do. And we should be doing what we can to promote the healthy business here as much as possible since that brings more tax in, makes it a better town. Now, you can argue about what we're talking about enforcement, okay? The whole other issue is, is this a reasonable regulation or should the sign regulations change? I mean, I don't have a problem enforcing the regulations if and holding everybody to the same standards, but the fact that they're all out there, whether we think it's pretty or not, the reason they're out there is because it's working. Otherwise, they wouldn't be putting them out there. And, I'll, I mean, and there are a lot of business owners, too, who live in town. So it's not they're all so, okay, go all right. night and just you know, try to so, maximize so, the profit. I tonight, tonight before yeah. the meeting, I was talking with Reggie. And um, you know, about maybe 100 feet going towards US Route 1, there is the old central office for 453 Exchange. And it's the phone company. And they have a sign right stuck in the ground that says they have a special on the internet. And what? This is, it's ridiculous. I mean, is this still a residential area or? Yes. So in a residential area, this multi-million dollar phone company decides that Guilford should have a sign advertising that they have cheap internet. I mean, clearly. Me, I mean, I want to promote business too, <laughs> but I would also like to keep our town looking nice. Well, I mean, they were there a long time, that CEO. <laughs> they, they came in in the 50s, so they were yeah, probably they, grandfather they, they, they in. They used to have a big switch there, but yeah. I don't know about putting signs. I mean, well, you know, if, if it drives business, should we say yes? You, you know what? I'll tell you what. We want you to succeed so much that we're going to put a big, we're going to give you permission to put a big flashing red light that says, you know, come down to whatever, uh, you know, the, the GNC nutrition. We have some great things for men to take. You know, at some point you have to say, all right, you know, what was what's impacting the visual, how nice our well, town that's, that's one way to look at it, but if you look at it from the business owner's perspective, it's different. This way. You know, so, I mean, it, so, I'm so, not saying okay, so how about the idea right. that there's equal enforcement? Here we have a yeah, business I, owner I, that, that absolutely minds the rules and does a great job. The place right. looks great. And next door, it looks like Hong Kong. I agree that if they're not following the regs, it should be enforced. But that's different from what the regs are. Ultimately, should be, but I agree with you 100% that if somebody's following the regs and the guy next to you isn't, then you say, well, okay, why am I the sucker that's you know, yeah. not, you know, following well, the maybe regulations? Maybe that's why it gets yeah. so bad. So I, I, I have no problem enforcing the regulations. It, you know, in whatever way you find. And then aren't there certain that are grandfathered in that yes. can get many signs, and there's nothing we could say or do about no, that. It's that like anything. Exactly. Are they all under? Gone. So are they all under the? These are temporary signs. Right. So under that, 
everybody's on that hundred foot right. one sign. Other things are grandfathered in, but not these particular. Yes. But any sign that's a temporary sign, because like I, I mean, I've driven by some businesses that. <laughs> In the summertime, I could I could count probably 15 signs on their property. It's one business. I don't think they have that much frontage, but I was told that they were grandfathered in. Well, maybe that was a long time. Yeah, but. maybe they were, maybe they're not. But I mean, I think you have to enforce it. For, I mean, it's like any other law. I mean, there's laws I don't agree with, but I have to follow them. Okay, and if I don't agree with them, I should try to get a change. You don't disobey it, and that's if you don't enforce it, then it becomes a free for all, and people who do follow it eventually say. You know what am I doing? I'm I'm the fool for following it. So I, I think you know maybe you start with this, and I, I don't disagree with Walter that we could give you the authority that you could then use it if you really have somebody sticking it to everybody and taking advantage of it. I I think there should be enforcement, and if there's an issue with the signs, then I think EDC and maybe the chamber should come here and say this is how the regulation should change. But until they're changed, and, and, they, they and you're right, and they did that with the sidewalks. Yeah. They came here and we listened to what they said. Right. So I, but I, I think, you know, just talking about not getting into is the yeah. good regulation. <coughs> I think you should be allowed to enforce right. it in a reasonable manner. And if you think you need that authority for somebody who's being particularly difficult, I'm all for it. So now to find difficult, is it, you know, like, sure, well, I think letter, you have to use judgment, like, okay, like this 90, if, if the guy did it in two weeks, now maybe there was a new manager or somebody didn't get the word, but some, if it happens again, I would say, you know, you're going to be fine. Within what time frame? You know, another week or two. I mean, I think you have to use your judgment okay. how, how blatant it is, but if you don't enforce it, you're going to have people not following it at all. I haven't been around. I think I was around when the last sign regs were written when I was with EDC then. I think we're, we're going right, your avenues of suggestion are fine. Let's have, send it back to Steve, yeah. have, he'll get some input between the chamber and uh, other in his relationship with the business community. I mean, I've been around since the blade signs have been here. I used to remember looking out from the old drugstore down, looking down toward yeah. Finest so and Edwards better. and... Yeah. Well, Mike um, Ryan's down there with the everybody had blade signs, and, and and that's good. But you know what? We have but regulations yeah. now, and exactly. it's not working. We you know the business owners know now that there are sign regulations, and they're still out now. I don't see what the harm is no. if we say that if you put your sign back out right. in 90 days, then you know what? We're just going to say you will get a fine if it, if it happens again or whatever. But you should have the power to threaten the fine, and you should be able to do it. But um, we shouldn't be seeing sign. And you're right too. The other side, we shouldn't be seeing sense. Sandwich Board City, up and down Route One from border to border. Right, and, and it looks it looks terrible. I mean, when when and, and my friend that was here came from a really bad part of New York State, and for him to laugh at this, um, it's embarrassing. I have a big problem with the idea of giving you this blanket authority just for these signs. I think that if we want to give you blanket authority to find people, I'm kind of okay with that. I know that your judgment is pretty good, and you would. I think that 90, I think 100% of the time you come to us for a fine, we give it to you. So I would propose if we're going to do something like this, if we give you blanket authority to to um, to find individuals who are in, in um, default of the zoning regulations. That's what I mean. That's what I would recommend. I don't. I think that nitpicking the signs is is, is a problem, and and it could create a problem down the road for the town of Guilford. So, so are you suggesting that we grant her uh, authority across yes. the board that anytime she wants to find someone yep. the $150 in her own discretion without asking us? That's what I'm suggesting. That. I don't That's see exactly a problem with giving that kind of authority to Rick. Yeah, but I also... Because there is a right to, to, if to appeal it. They can appeal it. If yes, they, I, I think they have yeah. yeah. the ability yeah. if they don't... Agree with it. Yes, there is a process. I, I, I just don't think uh, that picking and choosing yeah, yeah, what yeah, things yeah, we're giving you authority on is a good thing. For yeah, 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 we don't want to fix the problem. It's just anti-business. Yeah. You come down too strong on that's what's going to result as so you're going to have more vacancies and. So so okay. So you you would support granting Reggie authority in her discretion to issue a fine at any time. Yeah. Yes, I don't, Ray, would you I don't see a problem with that because there is due process 
people right. have a process to appeal it if they disagree with Frank. Yeah. You okay? Yes. Well, definitely. You okay? Yeah, Reggie, I just, um, I wanted to know if there are any additional, one of, one of the values of this commission is that we take certain kinds of heat. In fact, one of the only values of this commission <laughs> is that um, we take certain kinds of community heat um, for decisions that are otherwise contentious. So if... Um, um, is there any kind of adjustment to that sort of blanket authority that still allows? I think there is. I think I know what you mean, Walter. Yeah. I think what, what Reggie could probably do is if it's a problem, if she has someone that she wants to find but she doesn't want to independently do, we still have the authority to direct her to find an individual so she can come to us. But that's where we are now. And I know what I'm saying is she has a blanket authority to find. We're, we're giving her the authority tonight to find whomever she liked us in violation of the zoning code. We would have to change our regulations. Yes. Yeah, we would have to change our regulations, but that's what we're that's talking right. about. That doesn't take away our ability to direct her to find someone. It just means that she has the authority to do it. If she wanted to say to us, yeah. oh, there's an individual here who is in constant violation of, of the zoning code, I would like you know you guys to direct me to find him. Fine, we'll direct her to find him. I mean, it doesn't it's take that way. away. It just work, we work now together. Right. right, but now let's say she's gone down to you know some store and they took the sun in, and two weeks later they put the sun out. She goes down there, what are you doing? And he goes, hey, you know what, um, I'll t I, it was a mistake, I'll, I'll take it back. And a week later she goes back. I don't necessarily want her to come to us and say, look, this guy's being a jerk. I think she could do that for no. the person that has the wood pile in the backyard that has to have it removed as well. I mean, yeah. we can't pick and choose who it is we want to give her authority to. I mean, we have to be fair to all residents, whether they're business residents or whether they're, they're you know, citizens that don't own businesses. I mean. That's the point of, of this commission is to be fair. So that's why I would say that she could do it to any individual in the town. Do we have really to, have the state statute? I, I have to look at how our ordinance is written. Yep. Because the sure. ordinance yeah. says I have to ask permission from the planning and zoning commission. And I have to follow the ordinance. But, but does, it, does it say that you have to ask each occurrence or if we give you that permission? one time and it's a blank of permission that's okay. Because <laughs> we can also take it back at any time. Yeah. Yeah. So when I mean, you're right. is out of control. Yeah. Yeah. Right. When, I'd have when, to look at maybe we, we need to look let at Let me the research board. that and bring it back to you at the next meeting. Okay. In the meantime, I'm going to work with Brian and EDC and the chamber and yeah. see if I can put an yeah. article yeah. in the paper also about <laughs> uh, temporary signage <laughs> and maybe he can you make the article blink? <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> no. Say Michael's. No. Like Wait, a sign. Uh, uh, may we continue this at the next meeting? Yes. Yes, yeah. yes please. That's fine. Uh, research the uh, ordinance. We really should be cognizant of the ones that are impeding the sidewalk where it could, yeah. could potentially pass on with a handicap or safety of... Yeah. Well, that's, what yeah, so that's the major, yeah. major thing. When, when that comes, when, when it's safety and things like that, uh, besides the operator, maybe the landlord ought to be apprised of it also. Yeah. Oh, well, that's what my letter says. I'm going to find the landlord if they do it again. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move to approve the bills. No, this is really getting out of control. Half a thousand dollars for the bills. Almost five hundred fifty-one dollars and sixty-nine. We can't cents. find enough people. All second on weekends, right? All approved. <laughs> Pay the bills after seven. After sundown. Aye. 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 What did you pay for a vote without me? <laughs> I didn't do it. I did it. There's a contempt as per our new relationship. There's a contempt component if you start getting too out of control. <laughs> That's right. There is. All right. So <laughs> the uh, could you pass this down, please? So the minutes. Did anyone have an opportunity to read them and review them? Anyone? Yes. They yes. look. Do they look uh, substantially yeah. correct? They look as good as they can be. And then you know we should really compliment Lisa. Oh. She's really turning out some nice minutes. They're beautiful. Minutes. So great work, Lisa. Nice minutes. All right. All those in favor of approving. <laughs> Minutes. I'll make a motion. I make a motion. Yeah. The minutes and and someone second it. I second it. All right. All those in favor. Aye. All right. I wasn't at that meeting, so I recused myself. Yeah.
Mr. Chairman, with no further business before the commission, I would like to move that we adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.